2A. A Brief History of NLP. Let's travel back to the tumultuous times of the 1960s, the Vietnam War, Soviet Union hostilities and nuclear devastation, and massive social change, which, if you weren't born yet, all continued into the 1970s. Major influences included a growing discontent of our government, Watergate, impeachment of a president, the civil rights movement, increased influence of women's liberation, a serious concern for our environment, and the pinnacle of space exploration. Many of these radical ideas of the 60s gained more acceptance and were mainstreamed into the American way of life during the 1970s. Amongst all this chaos, the American culture flourished and grew with every teenager entering puberty. Our literature, entertainment, fashion, and especially music were highly influenced by both decades. And it seemed that California was on the forefront of this momentum. Our culture was changing. The early 1970s. In a time of social upheaval, a young college student had the opportunity to work with Fritz Perls, transcribing some of Perls' therapy sessions. He found that he could imitate, with a high degree of accuracy, Perls' language skills to help clients change unwanted behaviors. Then, working next with Virginia Satir, the student was able to model her ability to uncover and resolve deeper family issues. His success caught the attention of the linguistic professor on the campus of University of California at Santa Cruz. The student, Richard Bandler, used what he knew about patterns in mathematics and computers, while the professor, Dr. John Grinder used his knowledge of patterns in linguistics, and together they organized the information into a formal process. They commandeered a classroom and began teaching the language patterns to eager students, and, and suddenly they were both replicating the same capabilities, which were supposed to be of graduate-level therapy skills. They called this new pattern the meta model. Meta meaning Greek for above, beyond, or about. Then Richard and John set out to model the hypnotic skills of Milton Erickson, the psychiatrist-psychologist specializing in medical hypnosis. Erickson was the founder of the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis and one of the world's most widely recognized hypnotherapists, psychologists of his time. Along with Robert Diltz and others from the original group, Richard and John befriended Gregory Bateson at the university, who introduced them to Erickson as well as other influential individuals of that time. From their work together, they wrote Patterns of the Hypnotic Techniques of Milton H. Erickson, M.D., Volumes 1 and 2, which examined the verbal and behavioral patterns of Erickson's work. Additionally, Richard and John published two additional NLP books, The Structure of Magic, Volume 1 and 2, and that's how it all began. They built a communication model about human thinking and processing and used that model for how we see images, hear sounds, reproduce smells, tastes, and touch in our mind to code and represent the structure of our subjective experiences, our internal reality. This was huge. Over the years, NLP has developed very powerful tools and skills for communication and change in a wide range of professional areas, including psychotherapy, education, health, creativity, law, management, sales, leadership, marketing, and even parenting. The future of NLP. There's no longer anything just called NLP. John and Richard split up citing creative differences, forming their own practices of NLP trainings and workshops. NLP has now evolved into so much more, especially with the 1980 and 90s infomercial craze of Tony Robbins. NLP continued to flourish, although Robbins rebranded the name to NAC strictly for his own organization. Many individuals have used the foundation of NLP's methodologies to create offshoot practices such as EMDR, the Sedona Method, parts of EFT, even meta-states. NLP has become somewhat of a movement rather than a well-organized methodology. It is rapidly growing and diversifying and developing a body of knowledge and information to help individuals model success and change. 
Some people may look at this lack of regulation as an unquantifiable institution of the entire field of NLP. Yet the truth is, this is how it all started. And NLP continuously asks its observers to always be curious about how the process of evolution and change actually happens. Just know, this is not an accurate description of the history of NLP. Over the decades, I have yet to find one person that truly captures the exact chronology and what really happened in those exciting early days. So much of what did happen is based on rumor, speculation, gossip, and retelling of stories. But one thing that we do know is NLP started an entire generation to look at self-development and change in an entirely new way. There is now a rich and diverse source of tools and methodologies that can help people alleviate negative experiences and help them create empowering life events. Okay, let's move on.